what's grace got to do with it? Except that's not Grace Jones, that's Tina Turner. But hey, it all works. So that's this morning's talk title is, What's Grace Got to Do It? This month we've been working with the idea of living an intentional life. And so the question then becomes is, what does grace have to do with living an intentional life? Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but first... Why don't we say our focus statement here together, all collectively? So here's our focus statement. It's also over there on the wall over there, and it's out here on the screen. So with velocity, here we go. We embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love. Ah, yes. How does that feel? Anchor that in. Feels really good, doesn't it? Yeah. And so, uh, Tony, go to the next slide. Ta-da! Look at that. Isn't that sexy? Isn't that exciting? So, through visioning uh, this summer, we had our vision class, And so through visioning this summer, it came through that, wow, we ought to combine the Riverside Rain Cross logo or symbol with our own teaching symbol here at Centers for Spiritual Living, the Science of Mind teaching symbol, that somehow those two things ought to be combined. And so then Jeannie Kataoka was busy on a little pad, scribble, 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 and it goes boom, and she sent this, and then... I had a graphic designer friend in Las Vegas. I had to explain what the ring cross symbol was. Uh, But I had a graphic designer friend in uh, Vegas uh, do this up for us. So this will now help to represent us, this community, as Riverside Community Center for Spiritual Living. It's distinctly Riverside, and it's distinctly us. So how do you like it? Okay. Can I go that? Can I go there? All right. Okay. We're videoing, and so I was in a funny light, so there we are. So uh, thank you. Appreciate it. There we go. So it's so good to have this um, and to have this down here and look at the transformation that's been happening up here. We're continuing to transform, we're continuing to grow, we're continuing to expand. And what I know is that in 2019, it's going to be even better and even more exciting. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. And actually, uh, Reverend Stacy Hilton will be here next Sunday to talk about walking with our eyes wide open. And she'll then be facilitating a workshop about um, conscious creativity and or creating um, the best for 2019, because I was thinking, you know, why should we wait all the way until uh, December 31st? Why don't we get a jump start on that, begin thinking about what it is that we want to begin to think about, what it is that we want to begin experiencing in the year ahead, which is part of the reason why we're doing this month of living intentionally, or living an intentional life, so that we can begin to think about that as we're moving through the holiday season, which for some folks can be I don't know, uber stressful. I don't know if that's your case of it or not. I, we just go to Delaware and I have a good time. So um, it's pretty easy for me. Uh, um, but I know for others it can be a very stressful time. So how about we begin moving through that intentionally? So what does grace have to do with that? This week is Thanksgiving, uh, or it's Thanksgiving Day in the United States. Canada's already had theirs. Um, but it's Thanksgiving in the United States. And the idea, the concept behind Thanksgiving is to be being grateful for the bounty and the harvest. It's a harvest festival. To be grateful for the bounty and the harvest of our lives. And so once again, what does grace have to do with any of that? Well, if we look at the root words of grace and gratitude, guess what? It's the same root. It's gratus. Gratus. From 
the Latin, G-R-A-T-U-S. Not I-S, because that would mean free, but it is free too. <laughs> but it's about uh, being grateful that there is a grace and there is a gratitude like what uh, Yvette sang about last week. And so the way we want to look at grace, this morning we had a really good discussion about grace and how that shows up in our lives and what that means for us. And we talked about the definition of grace because we really kind of have to start there. What is the definition? How are we choosing to define grace? Some people mentioned that grace is like a gazelle or a baby deer, right? That there is a, the grace with which a deer moves, right? A very graceful movement that is about agility and flexibility and poise. And what we know from the spiritual concept of poise is that means equanimity. That means being in one uh, being in such a place of poise, pl such a place of uh, internal alignment and stature that we're not easily blown off course when things start to swirl and move around us, that we um, stay centered, if you will. And so that is one idea of a way of grace expressing itself. And then we came, we discussed the idea of <clears throat> grace from a more traditional uh, concept in terms of religion, and grace being the idea that it is unmerited favor. Unmerited favor, given by God. Yeah. <laughs> if it's unmerited favor given by God, that means it could be unmerited favor withheld by God, right? That implies that there is a sense of judgment of you deserve it or you don't deserve it, or simply that we're all undeserving people born in original sin. And what we know, or what we uh, believe and espouse here, is that we're not born in original sin. No, 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 no. We're born in original love because love is all that there is. So if love is all that there is, then how could we be undeserving? How could it be unmerited? If love is all that there is, if in the beginning was the word and the word was with love and the word was love, and that everything was created of love, and that which not was, uh, was never created by love was never ever created, that which wasn't created by love was never ever created, then it stands to reason that love is all that there is. And so if love is all that there is, then what grace then has to be is the ever-givingness of this love. This ever-flowing uh, of this love this high idea. And notice that where I'm using the word love in exchange for the word God or in exchange for the word universe, it's all the same thing. It's all that one thing. But love is at the very root of it. So if grace then is the ever-givingness of love, and if love is all that there is, and that we are then, then we absolutely have to be the power and presence of love made manifest, that that is the very true nature of who we are. If we're love itself, how do we then have to deserve love, or how do we then have to uh, beg and plead and beseech and get on our knees and bargain and all that for love? We already are it. You already are it. So why do you need to seek it? Why do you need to beseech it? Why do you think you don't deserve it? You are it. Yes? All right, Dinah's it. Frank's it. A few others. There you go. <laughs> So that's really, truly who and what we are. So if we are that, then we are constantly, hear this, we are constantly, we are constantly living in a state of grace. 
Grace is always happening. Grace is ever available. Grace is always flowing. Now, do you experience grace every minute of every day? No, why not? We get in the way, right? We somehow get ourselves in the way and we turn down the tap or we turn off the tap or we fail to really step into the flow because grace is another word for grace is divine flow. And so it's always flowing. We simply have to tap into that. We simply get to align ourselves with that. And when we bring ourselves into alignment with that and we like get in the canoe and just like cruise on down the river, then things flow, right? But if we try to turn the canoe and we're trying to paddle up river, right? We're going against the tide. We're going against the current. Then we're not really, we're efforting a whole heck of a lot. And we're not really living in that divine flow of grace. Or if we never even put the canoe in the water, we're really not availing ourselves of what's available to us. And one of the ways that we begin to align with our good and align with the grace that already is, as we've been talking about all month long, is by setting intention. By waking up, by going to sleep, before you go to sleep, write it down before you go to sleep, allow your subconscious to work on it. As you get up in the morning, allow that to be your very first thought. What is my intention for the day? And so by setting intention is one way that we begin to align with our good, that we begin to align with the grace that already is. The abundance, the infinite, eternal abundance that already is. That's one of the ways that we begin to align with it. The other way that we can align with it or that we begin to align with it is by the other word that comes from the same root, which is gratitude. By expressing our gratitude, by feeling gratitude. Gratitude is a doorway through which we step into that flow of grace, step into that life. And the way Constance so beautifully started off this morning by sharing with us that to uh, contemplate what it is that we are grateful for. What are those things for which we are grateful? And to step into that and to begin looking at that and begin focusing our ideas and focusing our attention, focusing our awareness, if you will, on those things for which we are grateful. And in so doing, what we know of the way the universe works is that that which we place our attention on and what we place our intention on expands. It continues to expand. And so if we are grateful for our lives, we are grateful for our family, we are grateful for our things, we are grateful for the way things work, we are grateful for our experiences, then there's a greater opportunity for expansion of those. However, if we choose to not focus on those things and focus on the negative and focus on the limited, well, guess what? The universe still expands it, but what is the universe expanding? The limitation. The limitation is what we then experience more of. I've invited you to start seeing yellow trucks this, this month, right? Yellow trucks have always been there. They've always been there. But now you've started noticing more. I, we were talking about that this morning, too. Like several people were like, oh, yeah, we saw yellow trucks yesterday. Julianne, I think, said, and it's like, yeah, we saw yellow trucks yesterday, just yesterday. And not only is it yellow trucks, but it's yellow cars and like slightly orange cars. And is that one chartreuse? And what, you know, it's like, wow, all of a sudden we're seeing cars and we're seeing something because we've set our mind to it. We've set our attention on it. We've set our focus on it. So gratitude is another way of focusing our attention and bringing ourselves into a greater alignment with that which we want to experience and that with which we already are experiencing. So I invite you to think about this. What would it look like, what might your life look like if instead of focusing on the goodies, and the goodies are good, right? But instead of focusing on the goodies, what if we started focusing on what's behind the goodies? Silence. 
So rather than just focusing, because what the goodies are, what the things are, is they're a demonstration of a higher idea. So your families, your cars, your houses, this place, these lights, the symbol, the backdrop, all these changes are a demonstration of something that's behind, of an idea that is behind, or of ideas that are back of the things. So what if we began thinking about, and we began focusing our attention on, we began expressing gratitude for the ideas behind the things, the qualities behind the things. So for example, with this, the symbol and this, what if we're grateful for these things and how they came about, but we're also grateful for the creativity that is behind those things. What if we're grateful for the creativity? Then what happens? When we're grateful for the idea or the quality behind it, then the idea or the quality behind it then has the opportunity to expand and grow. Because what gratitude does is it opens us up to being receptive. It opens us up to accepting our good, accepting our greatness when we come from that place of gratitude. So if you have a family or you have friends or what have you, I can be grateful for Ed, for my beloved. I can be grateful for him. Getting behind that, I can be grateful for connection with another human being, with another soul. Let's see how that's deeper than just being grateful for him. And then I can get behind that further and be grateful for the love that is present. And then I can get behind that even further and being grateful simply for love, love that is love that is all that there is. And so then when I focus my gratitude practice on that quality, on love, then that expands. And so then what then shows up then as I continue to focus and express gratitude for that is that all of you beloveds come into my life. And there is love here, and there is connection here, and there is relationship here. But what it is, is it's a focusing, it's a taking it back and focusing behind. Focusing on the quality, focusing on that high idea, the archetype for those of you who study young. Focus on the archetype of love, of peace, of harmony, of joy of creativity, of power, of balance, whatever that is for you. So as you're contemplating today and this week what it is that you're grateful for, by all means give gratitude for the things and the people and the experiences in your life. But I invite you to take it deeper. I invite you to get really behind it and look and see and take it even deeper. Take it to that deeper quality and then be grateful from that place and live from that place. Intend that. And then as Casey, she's here somewhere, as Casey, <laughs> as Casey has said um, most recently, outrageous blessings begin to flow outrageous blessings begin to flow. Things begin to happen that you never knew were even possible for happening because you're stepping into and simply allowing the flow to happen, the flow to flow through you because 
Spirit or the universe can only do for you what it can do through you. Mm -hmm. Spirit or the universe can only do for you what it can do through you. Right? That's Ernest Holmes. I wish I could take credit for it, but I didn't. It's Ernest. That's our founder, Ernest Holmes. <clears throat> And what does this require then, or what is the high idea there? Is that we begin to, the highest intention, if you will, the greatest intention is to be living in conscious union with the divine. To be living the life divine. But to be living in conscious union or conscious connection with spirit itself. That's the high idea because it was already given in the beginning. Nothing is ever withheld. Seek first the kingdom of God. The kingdom, meaning the relationship of God, the divine, and all things are added. So the high idea, the highest intention then, the gratitude then is to live in that connection, is to... Uh, experience gratitude for that connection, that deep connection that we um, cultivate through our spiritual practice, and to live from that place, and then all things are added. Grace then flows. So call it what you will, call it love, call it joy, call it peace, whatever quality you choose to assign to it, call it that. <clears throat> but what it is, what it really is, is the divine and your relationship with the divine itself. What that takes then is it takes building faith. It takes trust. It takes allowing and surrendering, knowing that there is a divine law at work that is for our good, that, there is a, that the universe is always conspiring for our good. If we but step into alignment, it's always conspiring for our good. Some of those experiences, though, they don't look so good. But when we walk through them, as we were talking about last week, when we walk through to reach the other side, we tend to see that they were always for our highest and best. And so it is a faith, when we talk about faith here, what we're talking about is faith as a mustard seed, not faith of a mustard seed. Faith of a mustard seed is, um, <clears throat> if I just have this little itty bitty 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 bit of faith, then great things will happen. Well, that's possible. But it's not really the way it works. We're trying to get something for nothing if we're only gonna have a little bit of faith. Faith as a mustard seed means that there is everything that that mustard seed needs to become the mustard bush, the mustard plant, is already within it. And it already knows how to do it. It already knows how to be its magnificent and glorious self. So that's the faith as the mustard seed rather than faith of a mustard seed. So stepping into this flow takes faith. It takes trust. It takes allowing. It takes surrendering to the current, to the flow, and trusting and knowing that the universe always provides. Always provides. And this knowing is something that we can be grateful for. This knowledge, this awareness, this conscious union, this awakening to the high idea. Living in grace is something that we can be grateful for. Understanding that grace is, is something to be grateful for. Understanding that we are the divine made manifest as something to be grateful for. And this gratitude multiplies 
and multiplies and multiplies. And that is the abundant blessing. And that is what grace has to do with it. And so it is. <clears throat> so I invite our practitioners and our core council to please stand and surround the sanctuary. <clears throat> And let's all come together in consciousness, shall we? So I, if you feel comfortable, I invite you to go ahead and close your eyes. And let's come together. Hmm. And so what I know right here and right now is that there is only one life, one love, one infinite eternal being, one presence. This one is all through all and as all. It lives, moves, breathes, and has its being as all of creation. And it was so in the beginning, and it continues to be so. It is the divine ever-givingness of itself, to itself, through itself, and as itself. It is the ever-givingness of love, because love is all that there is. And so I know that this is a rich and abundant universe, that it is forever and ever expanding and multiplying itself in greater and greater ways, ever experiencing itself through its creation. And what I know is that each one of us is that creation. Each one of us is the divine made manifest. Each one of us is love present. And so that there is no withholding because it, there is always an expansion and a growing. And so I know that we are one with this one. I know that we are one with this love. I know that it is the truth of who each one is. The power and the presence of love. And how good it is to know this. How good it is to recognize this. And so I speak my word here and now for this beloved congregation, for this beloved community, recognizing that love truly does live here, that we live in the flow of this love, we live in the flow of this grace, and that God's grace is our sufficiency in all things. There's nothing we need to do to get it, nothing we need to beg, borrow, to try to achieve it. There's nothing we need to add to ourselves, for we already are whole, perfect, and complete, just as we are. And so I know that the flow of love, the flow of life, is ever-expanding and always flowing through us to us, that it is always happening for our highest good. And I accept this here and now, knowing that this is the truth knowing that grace leads the way, knowing that our life and the life of the center unfolds under grace and in magnificent ways, for it could be no other way. It is the one and only way. And so we simply align ourselves with that. We align our community with that. And we allow it to flow through us out into the greater world. I give thanks for this realization. I give thanks for the bounty of blessings that have been bestowed already upon this community and that continue to unfold for this community and for each one here. How good it is to know this. I simply release this word into the law, knowing that it is done, knowing that it is so, knowing that it returns, multiplied, pressed down, and shaken together. I simply let it be so. And so it is.